fellow scrappers. This is Susan again. And today we're going to be working with Created by Jill's Blended Templates. And this is number 17. It's going to be available, well, by the time you see this, it will be available at either Pickleberry Pop or the Digichick. And I just wanted to show you a little bit about how these templates work. And then I'm going to pause the tape for a little bit pause the recording anyway. You can tell I'm old using saying tape instead of recording. Anyway, I'm going to pause the recording and then I'm going to get things set up and I'm going to start showing you how you blend the papers with this blended template and then bringing in your pictures and all of the wonderful goodies and elements and things after that. So when you first open up your file, you're going to see this and it's actually on the very top level of all of your layers. So if you scroll up to the top, it says delete this layer. If I turn it off, see how it disappears? This is just to give you a little bit of an example of what, how you use this. So you delete this after you read it. Number one is really, really important experiment. Take all the papers you want. Throw a paper in, take a paper out. Um, make it darker, make it lighter. Uh, do a whole bunch of fun things, move it around, see what you like. Don't be afraid, number two, don't be afraid to change it up. Rearrange the template layers, rotate them, flip them, use them all or only a few. Uh, there's so many things that you can do with this. You can make these be your own that no template like this will ever look the same. You will not ever have an exact duplicate of anybody's, which I think that is so great about this template. Uh, number three, get creative. Clip those papers to the template layers and watch what happens. You can always change them out. That's the thing about templates that are so wonderful. Make your clipping path. See if you like it. Clip it to the papers. If you don't like it, you just delete it. Just make sure you don't delete um, the original part of it. So don't delete the layers that Jill has on here, but just delete what you've added to it. Un unclip the clipping mask and throw it away. Um, number four was real important for me because um, I have always been very afraid of blending and artsy and all of these kind of things that I see so many people do, art journals and ATC cards, and I figured I could never do it. But I never stepped out my comfort zone and I never mixed things. I never just threw things onto the page to see what they would look like, and I never stretched myself. Once I stretched myself and decided I was going to do it, even if it was an icky layout at the end, I found I was the most happy. And that's what number five is all about. Have fun. You will be amazed at what you can create when you put things together that you never thought of putting together before and using this layer. So I'll be back in a few minutes. It'll only be a second for you, but I'll be back with everything set up. Okay everyone, I'm back now and as you can see I got rid of the delete this layer part. I also, which is very important, I renamed it so I'm not saving over the template. I can use this template again and again and again if I want to um, as long as I don't save over it. So what I did is while I was gone I picked a picture and I don't know how this is going to work out, but I was talking about being creative and doing something different. Well, this is a picture as traditional as you can get it. A 50s wedding with, um, it doesn't look like, well, it does look like rice. Rice being thrown, um, black and white picture. It's absolutely a traditional thing that typically would not go well with grunge and uh, blended papers and more modern kind of things. So I'm going to give it a try. It may not work out. It might look absolutely horrible at the end. It might look amazing at the end. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get started with it and I'm going to see what happens. And gosh, you know what? Who knows? It could be so fun afterwards. The first thing that I do, I use my clicker a lot. I use my cursor. See, I made it big. I have so much fun with this. Okay, I like to click the layer that I want to play with. So layer 13, it looks like it's this one right here. And I want to use pink. Don't know why, I just feel really drawn to make that be pink. So I pulled it in, hit enter, and then again I'm just going to use my clipping masks. Option, Command, G. And it made that butterfly, 
and all the writing pink. Love it. So then I start looking at the different pieces and if I'm gonna have pink here, I really should have something pink down here to kind of tie in. We've got a little bit of pink here, but maybe I'd like to have this be pink. So let's chick, uh, click on it, pull this over, hit enter, option command G, and mm, that looks like a lot of pink. Um, I'm not sure that I want to leave that like that. So for right now, yeah, I think that's too much pink, so I'll delete. See how easy that is? It is so simple. You won't even believe how easy it is to use this template. So I'm gonna try this little geshi thingy here, and I'm gonna have some uh, text. It's just a little tiny bit, see? See right here? It's just a little tiny bit that shows, but I really like it. And I think maybe I'll have it show over here too. So I'll click it, pull it over, and join it again. See how it showed some little things underneath right here? Now this right here, I think I want that to be pretty traditional. So I'm gonna try for, um, I'm gonna see what this looks like. Yeah, I think that's good. I think that's nice. Okay, and I'm gonna do something a little fun, and um, what's the word I want to use? Unexpected. You don't expect to have nice big colors, round things with this old-fashioned picture, and look, the pink, the pink up here ties in with the pink down here, and that looks really nice. So that's kind of tying up things a little bit. Um, I'm gonna do passion. And I didn't mean to open it. I'm gonna try to do passion at this one, and I wanna see what it does. I'm gonna drag it over, and it disappears. But let's see, maybe if we pull it, Or make it smaller. You can even make it smaller, way smaller, and then drag it back up. And see, it still says passion, but see how it doesn't it doesn't really fit in this hole that I wanted it to. So that's not gonna work. Um, so maybe passion isn't gonna work for this one. Since we brought in some greens, let's take a look at maybe using, right here, using this as a green. Oh, that kind of works. That's green. And then this, I'm gonna do some stripes. It's just, uh, yeah, 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 kind of like that. I kind of like those stripes. And I'm beginning to rethink this pink. It's way, way too much. But you could play around a little bit. You could change it to dissolve. Doesn't really change anything. Linear burn, what does that do? It turns it back to the black. See how I'm just playing? Color burn doesn't really change. Darker color. Lighten. Lighter color. I'm not sure that that pink really works. So, I'm gonna take that out for right now. It might actually look good staying black. You never know, you can play around. Let's try brown. What happens when I put brown on it? Brown might work. I'm gonna change the opacity. That means how much you can see through it, How how much it's going to let light come from behind. And pulling the opacity down and leaving the brown, I kind of like that. 
And there's another thing you can do, layer style, style blending options. And when you choose that, the top will get rid of the dark right here. I'm right over here. If you pull this down, it'll get rid of the dark from the top. See how it's going away? It'll also add white, which you can't really see with that. But the next thing is the underlying layer. It will do something. See how it takes the dark out there? And this will push the other layer through. Now, this isn't something that really is showing a lot because there's so much blending going on. So that really is not going to work for, for this particular one. But I kind of like the brown here. And this seems way too bold for me. So I'm going to go for something really light. This brick. I really like this brick a lot. And it just really softens it up. Softens it up tremendously. And then I'm going to do it on that one as well. Because I want it to be for both of them. See, now what happened was it kind of made it disappear, which in a way is okay. You can still see it. You can see it. I'm going to take my cursor here. You can see it. It's still there, but it's just not overwhelming the page. And sometimes that's very important to not overwhelm your page. Now this one right here is part of this. And I don't think I like this. See how I'm just playing? Just get rid of it. Just get rid of it. If you don't like it, find something else. That's the re that's really the beauty of, of scrapping like this. So I'm going to pull in this. It's a little bit of white, but it's got a little bit of brown. Excuse me. It's got a little bit of blue, too. And it'll pull a little blue in. And... Mm, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. This one I haven't done anything with yet. Now the other thing you could do is just plain turn something off. I don't think I like that one. I turned it off. I like the letters that are coming through here and I like the way it looks so I think I'm good with that. I'm really good with that. This one right here I think I want to have some of this nice orange. So I'm going to pull this here and group it in. And now we got a little bit of orange there. And I and I really think that helps to tie in this area right here too. So I've almost used all of the backgrounds. And I've got the stitches left and I've got the little scribble here. And I don't see any other backgrounds that I haven't used. Here's one. Okay, there's one right there. See how it disappeared? Up in the corner here, watch over here. See how it disappeared and it came back? I think that one could do really well with a little bit more green in the layout. And pull the green in. And where did it go? I put it at the wrong one. This is supposed to be right there. There we go. See the little pieces of green that it threw in there? I'm good. I'm good with that right there. And then what I do is I, I don't know why we have a text layer here. I'm going to throw this around and turn this off and see if it makes any difference to me. And it does not make any difference anywhere, so I throw this away. I like to do that so that it's not such a big file if I don't need to use it. Now this is up there. Okay, do I want to have that in there? Or do I not want to have it in there? Now that might be something that the pink would work with. So I'm going to click on that layer. So I'm on the right layer. You pick some pink, pull it in, and just a hint of pink back there, I think might be good, except there's no other pink in the entire layout now. So I have to decide. <clears throat> Do I want the pink in there? See how it's just a matter of thinking, 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 thinking. 
What do I want? What do I want to do? Do I want this? Do I want that? Do I like this? Okay, this is this is one that hasn't been used and I don't see it anywhere, so I'm not going to worry about it. This one is down here at the bottom, and I think that would do well to have a brown. And get the brown in there. See how much brown is up here? I don't like that, but I like it down here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my um, selection tool and I'm going to select over all of that area and I'm just going to hit delete. And I forgot I used it as a smart object. So when you have a smart object, you always have to rasterize the smart object before you can delete. And see? Now, this, the butterfly is clear, excuse me, and I still have the brown down at the bottom. So deselect, and what haven't I been doing this entire video? Command S, save. Always save your work. Okay, I'm happy with the blend here. There's a few places that I could still blend, but I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to stop here, and I'm going to um, condense some things, and then we'll be back, and we'll finish it off with the elements. Okay, I'm back, and I did a few things while we were gone. I renamed my file so I didn't lose my layers, so I renamed it too, but I took all of the background papers and um, merged them together, which is Command or Apple E, and created a background picture. So it makes the whole file a lot smaller and a lot easier to work with. The other thing I did while I was gone is I ch changed the pictures to sepia, and I think that's going to work better with all the browns and the oranges in it. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm fighting off a cold. And um, I also added, I changed these stitches to be orange, and they, and I'm at the point where I need to put their, um, I need to merge them, and then I need to give them a drop shadow. <coughs> Here, I need to give them a drop shadow for the stitches. There we go. And I've done a brown one here, and this one right here, I'm going to do brown. Again, I'm going to group it, then I'm going to merge it, we've got that there, and then this group of stitches here, I'm going to do the orange again. What I'm trying to do is do a little bit of tying in, tying, oh, actually, you know what, I think I'm going to do green there. Take this really nice little green here. and. Again, this is seeing what things look like. And if I do that and get a stitch drop shadow, do I like that? It kind of disappears. So I actually think that I'm going to take my history and, and unmerge it, get rid of that. And I'm going to do a brown one there because I really do like the way the brown looks. And so I make a clipping mask, and then I merge it down, which is Command-E again, and then I give it its drop shadow. <clears throat> so now I have my stitches done, and I'm going to put some drop shadows on here. And I'm going to use layered paper, because it shows them a little bit higher off the, off the paper. And what I love about drop shadows is it shows such dimension when things cross over each other. Um, I'm still going back and forth about the scribble. I'm not sure I like the scribble. So I'm going to turn it off for now. I might turn it back on later. See this little the little eye right here will turn on and off what you want, what layer you're on. So right now I think I'm going to go over and I'm going to start playing with, first of all I'm going to get a couple of word bits. and thinking about marriage. Marriage is taking the leap. Life is an adventure. Um, passion, obviously. Uh, and I think that taking the leap will work somewhere along here. And I'm going to have everything go to the top for now. And life is an adventure will work for here. 
and I don't always like things as big as this. So I'm going to put this, see this stitch right there? I want to select that stitch so I know which one it is, and I want this one to be under that stitch, which was layer 20, because I want it to be sewing it on. Okay, and then I'm going to um, check some of I don't know that I want it to be a chipboard because chipboard is pretty big. See how high up that stays? Let's try vellum. And then I'll try paper. And I think I like paper the best. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller because I'm, I am just one of those people that, that I don't go for size. I like things that that seem like they would be that that um, that size if you were to see it in real life. Okay, and life is an adventure, and my my in-laws have had a wonderful life. Three kids; they've been married for fifty-five years, I believe. Um, done very well for themselves. Um, I couldn't have asked for better in-laws. I really couldn't. Um, they have become my my parents, and with both my parents being gone, it means it means a lot more to me now. It always meant a lot to me, but <clears throat> it means a lot now that they think of me as a daughter, and and I have them as parents. It's real important to me now. I really. I really like this passion noun, and maybe I'm going to put this here instead of the other one. We don't know. I'm going to put that under, and maybe not the life is an adventure. Or we do this, and that might be an option as well, and make this smaller. Do you see how I'm just playing, 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 playing? I really do think that that's how you get better as a scrapper, and I believe it's how you learn what you want to do, what you like to do. It's real important. And I think that as we grow in our, in our skills, we start to see um, what we can do. It's an adventure, just like this kit. Life is an adventure. We're taking the leap. Um, so now you're going to be seeing where Susan just has a horrible time. I pick one thing, put it away. Take another thing, put it away. Back and forth and back and forth. Um, this, one of the things I really, really love about Jill's create, um, the blended templates is that you can really just take your energy and time in doing the background and you don't need a whole heck of a lot of extra stuff you really don't you can you can leave it you can um, you can add a whole bunch of stuff if you want to or you can just say you know what this is beautiful the way it is and I'm not going to add much more to it at all. And let me take this little banner right here. And I'm going to put it to the top because, again, uh, and again, it's going to be on top of just about everything. And since there's blue here, I'm going to try to tie it in a little bit with the blue. I'm going to cover this a little bit, give it a little drop shadow, and I'm going to put my date here. And the date was April 1959. Incredible. They've been married for, for that long. Such a blessing, such a wonderful 
sweet blessing. And this is something that I would use some of the, the more fun fonts. Possibly even one of my favorite favorite is Carpenter. I really, really love Carpenter. Um, and did I not put Carpenter on here? Yeah, there it is, Carpenter. You have to make it a lot bigger if you use Carpenter. Um, so basically what I do is I make it big, put it on where I need to put it on, and then use Command-T and make it small until it fits. Okay, so I like, I don't like it. <laughs> Carpenter doesn't work. Oh, well. <clears throat> excuse me again. I'll play with that a little bit later. Right now I want to see if there's anything else. I really do. I'm a flower person. Gotta have flowers. Always have. So I'm going to decide. First of all, they have to go behind everything. Turn this around. I'm wondering if I do need to have flowers on this this layout. It kind of doesn't. I don't know that it works. I don't know what flowers work here. I really like this tree. Kind of you know the family tree kind of feeling. So I'm going to put this tree on here, but I'm going to put it down here. It's going to go over that a little bit, and I'm going to treat that like a rub-on. And then I'm going to move this over just a tiny bit so it's not so squished right there with the letters. Pull this down. I like that a lot. And I'm looking at some other things that maybe I might want to do. Um, if I want to bring some blue in, then maybe this button might be an important thing, making a little tiny button here. Um, I keep hearing my cousin who always used to say button. Put a button, put a button in it, put a button there. Um, okay, so maybe we'll put some a little, little button on here, maybe. Um, Put one over here, maybe get a little bit of blue over here, another one here, and then I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use the green one and make this a lot smaller again, because you know me and my small buttons, and put that there, give it its, give it its drop shadow, and then do some green ones over here, do a green one here, maybe get a green up here, oops, I forgot to actually drag that one, and okay, well, now I have to decide what I'm going to do with that. Do I want to keep it? I think so, and I'm going to pull this one over here and make it go under it. And first I'm going to make it smaller because it is too big for me. It needs to be thinner. That looks good. And it's going to go a little bit over it. <clears throat> now it's going to be layered paper. And I'm going to do something with the drop shadow here. I'm going to make uh, create a layer, which is right click. And I'm going to create its own layer for the drop shadow. So then I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to edit transform and warp and it will allow me then to play around with the drop shadow I want it to cast see how it's getting really big I'm not going to do it like that obviously but you can make you can cast it other ways you can make it look like it's warping out like it's flat in one place and pushing in on another place. You can pull it down, push it in. 
and you can't really tell what I did <laughs> because of the busy background, but that's okay. See if I pull it up there, you can see how it's different. Put that here and pull this one down maybe so it can be holding that down. And this is where you may want to have a big button. Remember I told you how if it's in a cluster, sometimes it's, it fits to have a kind of a big button. My buttons are still small, but we have a button here and we need to send him back and see how maybe having a bigger button, not quite that big, but you have buttons, cute little buttons. And then I think I'm going to also put this in here. This is what makes me happy. And I'm going to put it above the blue one up here. And I still don't like the big button. I can't do big buttons. I don't know why. It just drives me nuts. Okay. I'm beginning to think that these should come down a little bit now and fill up this space a little bit better. Got a little bit of a visual triangle going on from here to here. Whoops. From here to here to here. And I'm going to hit save again. And I really like that. I'm going to leave it like that. <clears throat> Excuse me again. And this doesn't necessarily, it, it wasn't something I ever intended on doing. I never intended on making such a juxtaposition of, of traditional and splatty, paper, blendy, um, modern stuff. But it works. When you put things together um, and you take your time, I think it works. So thank you for scrapping along with me, and I'm sorry it took so long. Again, I'm not a fast scrapper. I hope to get better. Thank you for joining me. Bye.